Rising from the vast Pacific Ocean are the ancient and mysterious islands now known as the Federated States of Micronesia. The four unique states called Yap, Chuuk, Pohnpei and Kosrai have only 270 miles of land but are made up of more than 600 small islands scattered over 1 million square miles of deep blue ocean. Each of its four states is centered around one or more main volcanic high islands that were formed over nine million years ago, including numerous outlying atolls. These giants in the sea are like icebergs, with only the tops of their mighty structures breaking the surface of the water. Fishing is a strong part of an ancient culture. Together with subsistence farming and heavy rainfall, the fertile island was able to nurture the people over thousands of years. These important resources, however, are not only tied together by culture, they are dependent upon each other in a carefully balanced ecosystem. Pohnpei's annual rainfall can exceed over 400 inches annually in some areas. Historically, this rainfall made its way through the watershed, trickling down pristine streams, filling dams for drinking and nurturing the soil for agriculture, finally making its way through mangroves, carrying nutrients to the hatcheries and out to the reefs to feed the corals and fish. In just a few decades, a very short time in Pohnpei's history, dramatic changes have taken place in the net watershed. This watershed supplies the drinking water for approximately 75% of our population. Each watershed has three distinct zones. The upper zone on mountain and hilltops has healthy natural forest and deeply cut tributaries. The lower elevated middle zone consists of river floodplains where the vast majority of development is occurring. The lower zone contains mangrove forest at sea level, making it the nursery for many marine creatures. <laughs> He was saying that back in about 20 years ago, the forest was still intact and uh, the water quality was really perfect. And uh, But these days it's easy to just stay on the lowland and you can just look at the up in the forest and you can you can easily tell the the clearings on each sides of the the forest well before here is just a uh, natural it's it's all uh, big trees and it's still intact but the farmers do they they cut down trees and then plant the the, the plant they call sakao which is this one in recent history, the consumption of sakao has exploded as new, faster ways of manufacturing sakao have evolved. Once a drink requiring much labor and ceremony, sakao is now available in sakao bars and sold prepared in bottles along the street. The sakao, the plant, is our number one source of income. So when it comes in scaling, it's much heavier than the, those ones they plant in the lowlands. But uh, what we know is that the sakaos that were planted up in the watershed, 
is much heavier, but the taste is not better than those ones we blend at the lowlands. As the farmers move higher into the watershed, they clear large patches of forest to plant the sakau. This clearing creates highly increased erosion, which leaches into the watershed and the effects compound. Before, we don't experience a lot of erosions, but these days, uh, we've been facing a lot of uh, erosions around this island because uh, due to the, the upland forest clearings, they've been cutting down the, the big trees that, that holds the, the soil. Well, that's, I don't know, to me it's like common sense. Planting up in our watershed, disturbing the dirt in our watershed, removing the trees, then we'll have more mud, <laughs> or more turbidity at the plants. Erosion causes rivers and streams to change and creates even more erosion. All this sediment washes down to where drinking water is collected, damaging expensive equipment and requiring more treatment. Clearing upland watershed areas are part of the problem, but there are many contributors and many destructive results. There are a lot of contributions on the reef, not only from the Sakao. Yeah, it's true that uh, pure planting uh, or doing the deforestation caused a problem in the river and end up on the reef. And a lot of contribution, for example, landfill, trenching, those some kind of things that contribute to the sediments past the reef pile. It's, it's really uh, beginning to tell us some of the impacts uh, forest clearing is having on our reefs, having on our mangroves, uh, just smothering the uh, corals and uh, really degrading the sea life uh, and our fisheries in general. Also an important part of the local culture, pigs are highly prized and are very important as part of the funeral process. Like Sakao, piggeries are built along the water's edge, but they have a different effect. By, by looking at the water quality uh, result, uh, we, we believe that the community is the really main uh, factor of the contaminating the waters. Because all the improper big pens and improper jellyfish along the way, that creating or I mean causing all the uh, contamination in the water. The pigs here produce a lot of fecal material. They wash the fecal material into the rivers. Pigs are very much known to help spread a disease called leptospirosis. We do believe it, it contributes to uh, water pollution, uh, both fresh water and marine. We, we get a lot of uh, our foods from uh, the marine, the mangrove areas like uh, crabs and all that. And so in the year 2000, we, we had a cholera outbreak here in Bone Bay, which we believe is partly due to uh, water contamination. In addition to the health effects, Piggeries can have serious environmental and economic impacts. Fecal material from pigs is like clay. It is thick, it is hard, it does not break down easy. And whether it goes into a sewer, into a waste treatment plant, or whether it goes into our mangrove forest at the edge of the river ocean, it causes the same problem, it clogs it up. All of these issues combined are creating an alarming situation. A lot of contamination, a lot of uh, deforestation happening in the forest through the sakao planting, which is a major cash crop on the island. Uh, so it's imperative at this stage to make sure that we do a good job in protecting that forest, uh, to protect quality of water, quality of life for all Pompeians. There is no doubt that there are changes taking place in our environment, but are they natural? In the old days, you can just uh, go along the, uh, the shoreline and get these uh, sea clams uh, very easily. 
Nowadays, to do this uh, turpidity being washed down from the rivers, it's really affecting everything. Uh, people just think it's, it's just something that, <clears throat> while you get older, that's what happened. But I have witnessed through my whole uh, life that uh, these changes are pretty much due to uh, human activities, and I think some control has to be done with it. What happens if we don't manage our water resources? What happens to Pompeii's water supply if we continue to clear the upland areas? It's going to make it very difficult for PUC to treat the water if we, if we mismanage the watershed. The infrastructure that we have is already obsolete. So if we were to mismanage that and have all that runoff end up at the water treatment plant, then we would be in trouble. Big trouble. Yeah, if, uh, if there's no recognition, you know, people to their own ways, I know a lot of things that will happen. A lot of impact. Sickness, suffering, The first step in solving the problem is defining the resource areas. There's only one site that we're doing right now, and that is Netch. That's where our main water source is coming from. So we're basically installing these equipment up there so we can monitor the water. You can't manage what you can't monitor. However, even monitoring as a first step can be difficult. Well, land ownership is issue, also an issue here because if a project is in their land, then it's really hard, really give us really hard time to go, go in there and uh, do our work, even though we have the regulation in place. Not only does the issue affect the quality and availability of water, there are economic effects as well. What do you see charges the customer? is how much we spend to produce that clean water. So, the cleaner the water that we receive for treatment, the less it will cost the customer. At the current rates, POC supplies approximately 1,000 gallons of water for $1.80. This means a 55-gallon drum of drinking water only costs about 10 cents. To illustrate, one bottle of water at the store costs 50 cents. For the same 50 cents, PUC provides the equivalent of 270 bottles of clean drinking water. But if the water becomes more contaminated, the costs can increase significantly. In order to continue to provide clean, low-cost water, and protect the environment, steps need to be taken, and this begins with defining the watershed. It's been like an area designated for, for collecting the water. We have all our pipelines going there, and we discourage people from leaving there, but it's not shown anywhere in black and white that this area is this big, and it's supposed to be protected, and what are the People are not supposed to farm it. There's, there's none like that that's in black and white. Once we can secure a, a good amount of area to conserve for watershed, then uh, things will flow from there. I can see in Koshai also, there's still a disconnections between different stakeholders. Eh? I can see some overlappings, but I think in order to actually move forward is to do coordination of this work stakeholders, the government leaders, and agencies that actually do the work. In, uh, in terms of financially, uh, it will take quite a lot of resources to handle this. But the cheapest way to do this is very much educate the people and explain clearly on what they're doing and how, what's the effect if they don't do it. One thing would be people to be increased awareness on the issue and so really after that understanding work together on 
uh, best practices and methodologies to prevent the further degradation of the forest. Because we can see now that although we have a lot of water, it rains almost every day, but we don't know how to control that. It's still a problem that we're all facing today. There was uh, one time picking up this year, it was only a few months for sunny and then we realized that it's, uh, that's the time we, we all noticed that we were out of uh, running out of water. Community awareness is an essential part of conservation, but at the same time leaders must work together to create and enforce laws and regulations equally. Some commitment has to be made at the political level. Uh, this uh, commitment is, is missing. We require, you know, every, you know, uh, uh, level of people, especially at the national level, state level, the local government, and even the communities. And not to forget that is the traditional leader to be involved. And it's an opportunity that we have this, uh, this grant to pretty much at least to a level show the people that these are the things that you need to do and these are the things that you don't need to do. The IWRM program was created to help Pacific Island countries establish and implement best practices plans through the GEF-funded Sustainable Integrated Water Resource and Wastewater Management Project known as IWRM and the EU-funded IWRM National Planning Program. Well, if uh, IWRM can assist in uh, disseminating this information to the public, general public, it will be really ideal where people will really know what exactly we're doing. We want to have these the approaches of IWRM to, to you know, prevent all these activities that that under, you know, especially the water source we have here in Bombay. Well, I think the, the water project will really help the people of NAT in understanding the, the importance of water in their daily life and the development of that municipality and human resources in the generations to come. We make sure that it works, uh, otherwise if it doesn't work now, uh, it won't work in the long run. These programs are being implemented across the Pacific in a wide variety of projects with the ultimate goals of balancing conflicting uses of scarce freshwater resources, improving public and environmental health by ensuring consistent water availability and quality, reducing effects of soil erosion, inadequate sanitation, and other harmful activities on the quality of fresh and coastal waters. Well, uh, <coughs> from uh, 20 years from now, speaking of as a father now, I have two kids, and I'd like to preserve our forest for our next generation so, so that they can share what we have today, sometimes in the future. The problem is clear. We need to manage our vital water resource properly. It is not too late to make responsible changes. However, in order for Pompeii to be successful in maintaining healthy environment and abundant clean water, we must all work together. NGOs will educate, Leaders will come together and communities will take action to ensure a bright future. Directly and indirectly, you can say all of Pombe will benefit. Everybody benefits from clean water. Everyone gets the, the benefit of clean water, that's for sure. When people talk about water, it, it, it represents the, the old life, living things of certain or in every places. And I'd like to see that our children, children, or all the people, we always have sufficient water to use daily.
दामे की जा पीला रन बिच में पान पस ले रहा चाहे सिरिन Wasani pui 